Uh-oh, old man Kelly's going to talk about the Marx Brothers. Well, hello there. Old man Kelly here. Jeff to my friends, and you can call me Jeff. Hope you're doing well. So today I'm going to talk about the Marx Brothers. You see, I'm a huge Marx Brothers fan. I don't know if in the world of entertainment there's ever been four brothers quite like the Marx Brothers. I think they're hysterical. But you know that. You either like the Marx Brothers or you don't. And if you don't like the Marx Brothers, get out of here because we don't need to talk. But I'm going to talk about their 1929 film, The Coconuts. It's their very first film. Well, it's their first film, if you don't count Humor Risk, which came out in 1921 which the Marx Brothers apparently appeared in, but we don't know this because the film's been lost to the ages and no one knows exactly what they did in the movie or even if they were actually in it. But Coconuts is their first film of the Marx Brothers' string of hit films. and um, It's a very interesting film. Uh, it's based on the, the Broadway play by George S. Kaufman. And I don't know how much of his play actually wound up in the film itself. Who knows? I heard that Kaufman used to go see the play when the brothers were performing it on Broadway. He used to sit in the audience and people would ask him why he was there. He goes, I want to see if uh, Groucho is going to use any of my dialogue tonight. So I think the brothers were famous for improvising and playing off the audience. Now like all Marx Brothers films, music was a very important aspect to, to the show. In the Coconuts there's five songs that were written by Irving Berlin. And Irving Berlin would go on to write a whole series of hit songs back in the day. And of course, in the movie is the wonderful Margaret Dumont. And um, I can't say enough about her. She, she's, and people like to t- downplay her importance and talk about how she didn't really know what was going on and didn't understand the humor. No, trust me. Margaret Dumont understood exactly what was going on. That, all those rumors came later on when Groucho was trying to be funny as an old man. But, if you watch those movies and, and see what she's doing, her comic timing is perfect. When her and Groucho were together, she knew exactly when to say something and when to shut up and let him talk. The pacing was perfect. Her comic timing was per- perfect. I can't say enough about her. In fact, the films, there's a couple, she was in seven of their films, and there's a few that she's not in. And when she's not there, there's definitely a hole in the story. There's something that you can just, something's missing. And in this movie is the first film appearance of Kay Francis, the beautiful Kay Francis. Now, The Coconuts isn't one of the best Marx Brothers films, though there are some very funny scenes. I mean, the famous Why a Duck, Why a Duck scene is in the movie, and if that doesn't make you laugh, then again, there's the door. Get out, because we have nothing to talk about. Um, I enjoyed this film for its historical aspects though, in, in the history of the Marx Brothers, and I find that all fascinating. The film was shot at Paramount's Astoria Studios in New York City, as was their next film, Animal Crackers, before their eventual move to Hollywood. And it was shot there because during the day they would be making this movie, and at night they'd be performing Animal Crackers on Broadway on the stage. In fact, there's one scene in The Coconuts, it's actually during the Why a Duck scene, where Groucho actually calls Chico, or starts to call him, Ravelli. He goes, so Ravelli, and then he stops. The reason being is Ravelli's Chico's name from Animal Crackers, and you can see if you're performing one story at night, one story during the day, might be a bit of confusion. Now you might say, well, why was this left in the movie? Well, one, it's sort of funny. Two, I heard the the Why a Duck scene, there was 28 takes before they had one that they liked. The problem, part of the problem was because there's papers on the table when they're talking and the crinkling of the paper caused so much noise that eventually they had to water down the paper so it wouldn't make noise. And if you watch the movie, you could tell that the paper is sort of waterlogged. And while watching this movie, you sort of get that sense that the cameraman or the director or whatever didn't quite know what to do with the Marx Brothers or weren't prepared for filming the Marx Brothers. They're, they're, they're such fast-paced actions and scenes, the camera seems to have a tough time keeping up with them in certain shots. Now you have to understand, cameras back then, this was in the early days of sound. I mean, 1929, sound was still pretty new. And these cameras, these big cameras, made a lot of noise, the motors. So they would have to be enclosed in soundproof boxes with a window to shoot through, right? 
So movement was very difficult. It wasn't like today with camcorders where you could just follow around the action. Another thing you might notice by watching this movie is the change of quality. There are some shots that look perfect and there's other shots that look totally grainy and with too much contrast and detail being lost. And that was because, believe it or not, this film was lost. There are no surviving prints from when it was first released. The film we have today on DVD and Blu-ray was pieced together from what people could find. And I think they've got the whole movie. Probably they've got more than the initial release. There's a scene of really bad quality where Groucho is um, auctioning off land as part of a scam and it's horrible grainy footage and a lot of people think that was originally cut out. It was an outtake from the original film that's been found and added in. But now, despite some slow moments, and there are a few slow moments in this movie, there's also some amazing comedy and some wonderful dance numbers. There's a group of women, and if I understand it correctly, these women would later become the Rockettes, who do some some marvelous dancing. And in fact, there's a shot, an overhead shot of them dancing that you know has that kaleidoscope look of them moving around. And it was from it was the first time it was ever done. And a lot of people credit this type of shot to Buzzley Berkeley, which would come later on. But obviously, 1929, the Marx Brothers or whoever the director of this movie, I think there were two directors, did it first. So it's um. But you can sort of tell, watching this movie, that the Marx Brothers didn't quite get filmmaking. I mean, they were used to being on the stage. And there's a few scenes where they look bored or disinterested, I guess. And I think that was because they were used to playing off the audience, hearing the audience's laughter, and going with whatever was happening. And uh, I think it took them a while to get working in a film studio down, which they would do in later films. Now, it's said that the Marx Brothers were so horrified when they saw this movie, they didn't like it at all, that they offered to buy the negative and burn it so it would never get released. But luckily, Paramount, in their wisdom, released the movie, and it actually became one of the biggest grossing movies of that year. And it's considered one of the all-time top money makers in the early days of sound. And I think the Marx Brothers realized at that point that, hey, we got something going here. Anyways, you can tell I'm a big Marx Brothers fan. I, I watch all their movies. The first five they did for Paramount before they moved to MGM, I think were amazing. And uh, that's it. Uh, if you get a chance, watch the Marx Brothers Coconuts. DCM shows it every now and again.